and of the people in front of me. Something glorious is coming your way. Mighty power manifested in your life tonight. You know, everything was dark. And then we plugged in into that little socket and see everywhere became a bright. And as you plug in tonight, as you connect with Christ tonight, everywhere in your life, in your family, in your community, the light of heaven will shine. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise and glorify your name. How mighty you are, unchanging, unchangeable. What you have done in decades gone by, generations gone by, years gone by, you are going to repeat everything in every life here tonight in Jesus' name. A repetition of your glorious power, of your glorious manifestation, of your glorious visitation. In every life tonight, every heart tonight, every one tonight, here at the Alpha location, and all over the world, manifest yourself and visit everyone in Jesus' name. I will go back home with great blessings tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, you know, I was telling our pastor here that I love the Ghanaian language. Now, since I don't understand, the only one I understand is hallelujah, amen. Can you shout amen? God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight again, we come because of the glorious visitation of the Lord. The vision of the Lord is like diamond that has many sides. You have this side, this side, this side. And uh, that's why we continue. We're looking at the sides of the manifestations of the glorious visitation of the Lord. And tonight, as the Lord reveals himself afresh, and he shows us what will happen when he visits us gloriously? You will not be left out. Blessings in your life. Salvation in your life. Restoration in your life. Miracle in your life. Deliverance in your life. And the great reconciliation with the almighty God coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. We had expectations before we came that if the Lord can touch me, if I can touch the Lord, the expectation that he touches me and I touch him, that expectation you have in your heart, beyond even that, the Lord will do tonight for you. I'm looking at Psalm 62, verse 5. It says, My soul, which thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. My expectation is from him. No disappointment. No delay, no failure. My expectation is from him. He tells us in verse 6, it says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Look at verse 7. 
in verse 7 it says in God is my salvation in God is my glory the rock of my strength my refuge is in God and then it says in verse 8 trust in him at all times seek at all times sinful at all times defeated at all times oppressed at all times and so poor you could not have the sufficiency in your life at all times your trust in him is seen and you want salvation your trust in him in the dungeon in darkness in the prison and you want to be lifted up and taken up you trust in him at all times the sickness is so terrible and no one can help you you've gone here you've gone there you've gone everywhere trust in him at all times You have such a burden and such a heavy load you cannot even describe and you cannot break to the Lord. It says, that's not, don't go away from the Lord because of the burden. Trust in him at all times. So much disappointment in life, all those expectations were had, years gone by, decades gone by, years have come and gone, decades have come and gone, and the expectations are not fulfilled. It looks like the expectation is being cut off. You go that way, no way, you go that way, no way. Here is the time for the expectation to be fulfilled, only trust in him at all times. Tonight you are wondering what will happen. Something good will happen. Because your trust in him at all times. Trust him, not trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Look at verse 11 there. It says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, the power belongeth unto God. When God speaks once, that's enough. Let there be light once, that's enough. Let the ocean, the seas come up once, that's enough. When he speaks a word, a word of salvation, the word of deliverance, the word of power, when he speaks it once, that's enough. But look at this, God has spoken once and twice have I had this, the power belongeth unto God. The power to set you free belongs to God. The power to forgive, it belongs to God. The power to create and recreate your life, it belongs to God. He said it once, then he said it twice. Repetition is for emphasis. That you will know that whatever God says, He says on His throne in heaven, He says with a creative power, He says with His irresistible power, God has spoken once and twice have I had this, that power belongeth, belongeth, belongeth all the time, continually belongeth unto God.
And then in verse 12, it says, Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. God is always full of mercy. In the past, at the present, in the future, the mercy of God is always full. And tonight, the Lord is full of mercy towards you. Mercy. When do we need mercy? When we've gone so far from uh, the benefactor that we merit nothing. He is our benefactor. He is our redeemer. He is our recreator. And we've gone so far, we're even ashamed of ourselves. Talk of marriage, we do not merit anything. And that is when the mercy of God comes in. Lord, thou, thou has mercy to you, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. Tonight, we're talking about our fulfilled expectations by his glorious visitation. Our fulfilled expectations by his glorious visitation. What's your expectation? I expect mercy. It will come. I expect salvation. It will come. I expect restoration. It will come. I expect miracle. It will come. Say amen. I fulfilled expectations in the plural by his glorious visitation. There are three things we're looking at very briefly. Number one, the fulfilled promise of the Father's visitation. We've been far away from him, but he's always near. But in our thought, in our mind, in our action, in our behavior, we've been far away from the Father. But he's always near. Because he's an omnipresent God. He's there with you, he's here with me. And he's watching you, and when you say, Lord, fulfill your promise, I come. You'll, you'll know how near, how close, how present our Father is. The fulfilled promise of the Father's visitation. Number two is the full privilege of our friend's visitation. French, capital F. Abraham had one friend. God Almighty. And God Almighty was the friend of Abraham. Abraham was the friend of God. And the privilege Abraham had the fullness of the privilege Abraham had because of the friend, almighty friend, powerful friend, miracle working friend, creator friend. Number three is the fathomless power at his faith focused visitation. Fathomless. So deep you cannot come to the bottom. So wide you cannot come around it. So high you cannot get to the peak. Fathomless. Limitless. Unlimited in our lives. 
the power that comes to work in our lives. It works within us. It works around us. It works on everything that concerns us. The fathomless power at his faith focused visitation. You know, it focuses on faith. I close my eyes and I cannot see the air, the wind blowing. But I feel the breeze. That's faith. Even though you cannot see, even though you cannot physically touch, it's based on faith. The creator is in his creation every time, everywhere. And because of that faith we have, and the faithfulness he has, and the focus is on his faithfulness and our faith in him, there will be power manifestation in our lives tonight. I said there will be power manifestation in your life tonight. Look at those things one by one. We're looking at number one, the fulfilled promise of our Father's visitation. In Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. In uh, one of the part, in one part of our African continent, the people there say when somebody is laughing, uh, is weeping also on the inside. Smiles cover, laughter covers the sorrow, the suffering, the pain men, women have on the inside. But God sees the affliction. He sees the sorrow. He sees the heartache. He sees the pain that our laughter and smile try to cover up. The pain of failure. The pain of dissatisfaction. The pain of sorrow and sin and suffering. The pain of going to places we regretted at last. The pain of the regret and the remorse of our lives. He sees our pain. The pain of had I known. He sees it all. It's private, it's personal, it's painful. He sees it all. You, you can tell the children of Israel when he eventually came out. They say, "Well, remember the cucumbers and the onion and the pomegranate and everything that we ate in Egypt." Ah, they were covering up something. I see your affliction. I see your sorrow. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I've heard their cry. No, we don't cry in the open. We look tough. We look hard. We look like we don't care what is happening. That's why we smile. We don't cry. We just stand firm and we look straight at the person in front of us. I just say, I wish I could be as bold as that man, as that woman. But we cry. 
If a little child whips you, you'll not cry. If Satan, the great enemy, the mighty, powerful, demonic, occultic enemy, when he whips you in the day, in the night, I'm sure you'll cry. And the Lord said, I have seen the affliction and the cry. By reason of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. Thank God he knows. I said, thank God he knows. And he's going to bring relief. He's going to bring recovery. He's going to bring a restoration. It's going to bring total freedom for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And then he says in verse 8, in verse 8, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians tormented the Israelites when they were with them, when they were under them, when they were in their dungeons in different, different ways. And those Egyptians, it wasn't just them. It was the one that lived inside of them that said the generations and the progeny and the children of Abraham will not have the privilege, the power, the provision, the promised land. He has promised them. That's why those uh, evil spirits, evil powers, demons inhabited all those tormentors. And I tell you, they tormented them. And then the Lord says, I come to bring them out, out of the land to a good and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hevites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. He has come. He has come to bring us out. I didn't hear you. Amen. Out of the dungeon, he has come to bring us out. Out of darkness, he has come to bring us out. Out of the condemnation and damnation of the devil, of the enemy, the Lord has come to bring us out. Out of the secret crying. Out of the secret sorrow. Out of the thing that only each of us knows what we are going through tonight. He has come to bring you out. The time has come. The demons that choose to just touch you and grab you and squeeze you and uh, handle your life like a real flower that you know you pluck out and you, you make useless. The time has come, they will stretch out that hand, they will not be able to touch you. You'll be so far away in Christ, in God, that the hand of the devil will be so short, he can touch other people, he'll never reach you. Because God has come to give you a glorious, victorious visitation. It happened to them. It will happen to you. How did it happen to them? Exodus chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 13. Exodus 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was the blood of an animal at that time. All those lambs that they slaughtered referred to the Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was to come and take away all our sin and all the consequences of sin. And, and the next day, John seeth Jesus coming and he says, Behold, look at him, gaze at him, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, the suffering, the sorrow of the world. All the people, no exception. The man, the woman, the boy, the girl. All the members of every family. They applied the blood on the lintels of their houses. And the angel of death could recognize the houses where the blood of the lamb had been put. And the angel that came from heaven to touch all those houses without the mark of the blood. He so respected, recognized the blood because he's pointing to the blood of Jesus that will come. They never could get in to those houses to hurt anyone there. And when you recognize the blood of Jesus, when you recognize the power in the blood of Jesus, when you recognize the salvation in the blood of Jesus, and say, yes, Lord, I believe the Lamb of God has died for me. No matter what evil you had done before, that connection with the Lord Satan, demons, evil will never be able to touch you again. But the Lord told them something. He said, as you apply the blood, stay inside the house where the blood had been applied. Don't come out.